The following program has been made possible by the members and partners of All Nations Full Gospel Churches International. covenant relationship with them is different. But you see, how did he come into that faith? He believed God, he, but the moment he paid tithes, it's like, wow, God, first God owned me. Now I own God. Why? Because I'm a partner with him. Do you know that if God, God can trust you, he will bless you beyond measure. Because this is his church. This is his, his kingdom. God is only in one thing on earth. He is in the church that his kingdom will spread from shore to shore. Uh, that the knowledge of God will fill the earth. But it costs money. It costs what? Money. If God can trust you, why can't he give the kind of money he's giving to Bill Gates to you? Because you use it to build his kingdom. But as long as you are debating, should I pay my tithe on the, on the gross or on the net, you have a problem. So Abraham calls God, God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth. He has come into a new dimension of faith and relationship that he could brag about. In other words, Abraham now says, the supreme one is on my side. The most high God is my portion. I don't need your stuff. I'm blessed by the greatest. The one who owns both heaven and earth. What can you, a mere mortal man, give to me? That's what he said to the king of Sodom. And, and there is a blessing that flows from paying the tithe. Look at Genesis 15.1. Abraham's blessing expands. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. After he paid his tithe. God appears to him in a vision and he says, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Abraham's blessing expands to divine protection against his enemies. You see, when Melchizedek met him, he said, Abraham, you are blessed because God has delivered your enemies into your hand. When he paid his tithe, now God expands that and he says, give me that verse again, Genesis 15, 1. I am your shield. I am your exceedingly great reward. Abraham's blessing expands to divine protection against his enemies. Not only did God deliver his enemies into his hands, but now promises divine protection from his enemy. The blessing expands to protection as a reward. Think of it. Protection is a reward. And now, <laughs> there is something about this tight business that a lot of people fight and, and, and squabble um, about. No, please don't. I just want to give you a quick demonstration. Can I have two people uh, here, up? Uh, two people, come. come. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
So, uh, who is bigger? Okay, all right. Okay. Then try and beat him. Oh, yeah. Beat him in. And try, oh, no, no, you, you, you try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you see, and I, I come in to protect him. I come, I come in to deliver him. You see the point? I come, I have. This is what God has done for us. The enemy was beating us. The enemy was kicking us. The enemy was making a mince meat of us. And, oh, but you are not the enemy. <laughs> And then God comes in, he steps in, and he delivers us. But the enemy, he won't stop. You see, try and beat him again. And then, and then I come and I, 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 and then I deliver him. But the moment, but the moment God, the moment Abraham paid his tithe, God said, now I'm your shield. Now try to beat him, and I'm coming, you see, you see, you see, you, that is what Titan does, this is what Titan does, you see, the enemy is trying and God is shielding you, it doesn't matter if it is, if it is coronavirus, hallelujah, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's, let's give them a hand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, I have never in my life seen a believer who is diligent in paying his tithe ever af afraid of witches. Where I come from, we have witches everywhere, but I love it because they, they, they look at you, you know, they, because they can't touch you and they are mad and they are frustrated. You see, that is who you are. Especially if you have a living relationship with God, a tight, you are a covenant person who pays tithes. You go home, you know, when everybody is happy and celebrating, someone go, why? Because he, he's tried everything. Every time he comes, there's a shield right about you. In Malachi 3, 8 to 12, and we take it for granted. Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. But me, the portion I like, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Do you know that this is what we miss? There is something about a person who pays tithes. God says he will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the, in the, every time we look at this scripture, we look at the curse part, and some of us don't even want to look at it because of the, the fact that we are determined to rob God and we become an arm robber of, and so we don't want this scripture at all. But the portion I like is that he says he will rebuke the devourer for my sake. So if, if you want to try to hurt me, God is the one who will deal with you. Look, look at verse 12. And all nations will call you blessed, 
for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So you see, Titan brings us into a new dimension of relationship with God. It is one thing that the devil knows. He knows this so much that he does everything within his power to stop you from paying your tithes. You see, Melchizedek appears from nowhere to meet Abraham, the father of our faith. The faith you and I brag about didn't start even with Jesus. It started with who? The, the faith that you and I belong to started with Abraham. He is the father of our faith. Jesus came so that you can enjoy that promise, that blessing God gave to Abraham. Think of it. And we'll get to that. Nobody here will return with any form of bondage in his life or her life. Do you know that is the reason Christ came? We don't know this. We don't connect this. Even though we teach the Bible, a lot of people don't realize it. This faith that you and I have started with Abraham. So he is the father of every Christian. And so when Melchizedek appeared, he appeared to show him the proper order of service. The right way for a man to approach God. So he sets in order for man the divine order of worship. The proper way for man to approach and worship God. That was what he did. God has already called Abraham. The whole world was hidden. Everybody was, was a hidden. Everyone was, was a, a, an idol worshiper. But God appeared to Abraham and said, Abraham, I want to take you on a journey of faith. I want to have a relationship with you because this is what I want to do for mankind. And you are the conduit. You are the one I'm starting with. And so the priest of God, the Most High, Melchizedek, appears to him and he says, my friend, in him you take communion. In him you must also pay tithe. Because Melchizedek is the priest of the Most High God. He didn't need animal sacrifice in order to usher man into the presence of God. So he offers the communion. He gives bread and wine. Then he takes the tithe. In Toronto, I always tell people, don't joke with the communion. A lot of people, they, they come to church and they don't want to take it because they, they, their wife shouted at them. They didn't shout at their wife, but their <laughs> wife they weren't coming to church. And so because of that, they don't feel good to take the communion, my friend. Because <laughs> I've never seen a man shout at the wife before. It's always the opposite. <laughs> you know why that is that is so because most most times the women will pray and the man will not be praying and so the the, the woman is more spiritual so the woman wants to remind you that even you are going to church but God will bless you <laughs> That's why they try to fight before you get into the service. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1, remember Melchizedek was the priest of God most high. And then in the New Testament, think of it. For every high priest taken from among men, is appointed for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. But he didn't need 
to offer a sacrifice because he was the priest most, um, most high, the priest of God most high. Melchizedek didn't need to offer sacrifices for sins because he was the priest of God most high. In Hebrews 5.5, 5, so also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Do you know that Jesus Christ, our Savior, also has a priestly ministry. And God, his father, was the one who swore and said, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Today I have begotten you. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. He also says in another place, in verse 6, as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of who? <laughs> After Melchizedek. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek is a tight collector. And that is the ministry Jesus has. Look at verse 10, Hebrews 5, 10. Called by God as high priest according to the order of who? So the ministry of Jesus is not after the order of Aaron. His ministry is after the order of who? And Melchizedek, if he appears before you, you pay tithe on the gross. <laughs> Are you here? He doesn't take net. He doesn't take no discussion. It doesn't matter whether you have to pay your bills. He takes tithe on, on the gross. In Hebrews 7, verse 1, we are in the New Testament. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Verse 2. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness. And then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the son of God, remains a priest continually. This person or priest is not a normal, natural human being. No father. All human beings except Adam and Christ have human fathers. Think of it. All human beings except Adam and Christ have human fathers. No mother. All human beings have mothers except Adam and Eve. This is where Christ got his name the son of man from. No beginning of days, no end of life, but made like the son of God. Remains a priest continually, in other words, forever and ever. It is very significant to know that the priest of God most high ever liveth to continue his ministry. Do you know that Jesus, when he rose from the dead, when he, when he went up to the heavens, he is seated on the right-hand side of God the Father, doing what? As an intercessor, doing his priestly ministry, and he takes your prayers to God. He, he answers you, and, 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 and look at that. 
His ministry is forever and ever and ever. After the order of Melchizedek, so Jesus still takes tithes. In verse 4, now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. He says this man was so great because this man was no ordinary man. The, the, a man without father, a man without mother, a man without genealogy. You can't trace his ancestry. He just showed up because the Bible says he was the son and he was the, 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 the high the priest of God most high, rather. Made like the son of God. And then the son of God, Jesus Christ, is also made like Melchizedek. And he says that this man was so great. And it was him that our father, Abraham, paid tithes to. He didn't pay tithe to any ordinary man. He paid tithe. He, he said, consider how great this man was. Without father, without mother, without any ancestry, without genealogy. You couldn't trace his son. He was made like the son of God. He, he was the priest of God most high. He said, this man was so great. And he was the one Abraham paid tithe to. And look at verse 5. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law. That's from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. The God we serve never changes. I'm the Lord. I change not. Things may change. Situations may change. But our God remains the same. Amen. Paying and receiving tithes wasn't initiated just by Moses for the Levitical priesthood, but predates the law and the Levitical priesthood. He says that even before it was initiated by by Moses giving to the Levitical priesthood, it was required of those, or required of Abraham when he met, when he had an encounter with the priests of God Most High. Why? Because it was ordained by God and continues forever. Because the one who received it lives forever. Look at verse 6. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and bless him who has the promises. So this man is alive. He never dies. He's like the son of God. And the son of God, Jesus Christ, was made like Melchizedek. Why? Because that is the acceptable norm, acceptable way to serve God. Paying tithes is not just because Moses gave it to the Levitical priesthood, but it is the acceptable form of worship of God Most High. In verse 7, now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. When Abraham, who had the promises, met Melchizedek, Melchizedek being so great, the Bible says, consider him a man without beginning, a man without an end, a man made like the son of God, a man who lives forever. When Abraham met him, what did he do? He paid tithes to him. Abraham did not pay tithes to one of his sons. Sons of Levi, no. He didn't pay tithes to, to, to um, um, Aaron, no. He paid tithe to the son of God, 
the priests of God most high. So paying tithes has nothing to do with the law for you. It has everything to do with your high priest, Melchizedek, who Christ has become. So don't let people confuse you. You are not a Jew. You are not a Jew. You may consider yourself a black Israeli. I don't care. We are all spiritual <laughs> Israelis. Hallelujah. So Abraham paid on our behalf, and he paid it to the Son of God. He paid it to Melchizedek, the priest of God Most High, a man who has no beginning, who has no end, a man whose ministry continues, the ministry of, Abraham, of, of um, um, Aaron ended. But the ministry of Melchizedek continues forever. Verse 8. Here, mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. He says the Levitical priesthood, the tithes that Moses commanded, commanded Aaron and his sons to receive from the children of Israel. These tithes were paid to mortal men, men who have a beginning and have an end. Today, the high priest dies. A new one steps in. The other priests, they die. And then new ones are born in their place. But the one to whom Abraham gave tithes, the Bible says he lives forever and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. So tithe is not a new thing that began with Abraham, uh, excuse me, that began with Moses and Aaron and ended when the Levitical priesthood died or when Christ came. Mortal men receive your tithes, but behind the scenes, there is the unseen one who receives the tithes. He lives forever. He never dies. Who is that one? Look at verse 9. Even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak. You see, they paid tithes through Abraham to who? Melchizedek. Melchizedek was the priest of God most high. A man who has no beginning, a man who has no end, a man who lives forever and ever made like the son of God. So you notice that the tithes that Abraham paid, he paid on behalf of two groups and we get to that. I hope God will give me a voice to teach and teach nonstop. But, but, but listen to this. Do you know that if before Levi was born, because they became the tribe of uh, um, the priests, he, they paid tithe through Abraham. So every, everyone who is connected to Abraham pay tithe to this living entity, the son of God. The, the, the priest of God Most High, Melchizedek, and Christ's priesthood is after that order. Look at verse 15. Let's jump to verse 15. And it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest. The Bible says, you see, the priesthood of, of Aaron ended. But the priesthood of Christ never ends. And it's not after that order. It is not after the order of Aaron because he was not from the tribe of Levi. He was from the tribe of Judah to whom nothing was said concerning priesthood. But his, 
is after the order of Melchizedek. It's the reason the Bible says that God was the one who swore and said, today I have begotten you. You are my son. And I have given you a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Who has come? Not according to the law of a fleshly commandment. Jesus has come. Not according to the order of a fleshly commandment. Brought in by Moses. I love it. Do you know the Bible says, the Bible says that the law came by who? Moses. But grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. The order, you see, the Bible is setting two covenants side by side. The, the, the covenant of Moses that came through the Levites, that came through Aaron and, and, and with commandments, that the Bible calls it fleshly commandment. But no, that is not the ministry of Jesus, but according to the power of an endless life. Now I've given you a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, a man who has no beginning, a man who has no end, a man who lives forever. So the priesthood of Christ is after the order of Melchizedek. And hear this, Melchizedek is a tight collector. Verse 17, for he testifies, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. What does that mean? The priesthood of Jesus was not set on the premise or it was not predicated on the, the priesthood of Aaron, but it was predicated on the priesthood of Melchizedek. And guess what? Whether you like it or not, Melchizedek is never out of fashion. He lives forever and he is a tight collector. Is the reason Christ also is a tight collector. Because Melchizedek receives tithes. And Christ's priesthood is according to that order. So Christ receives tithes. It's amazing. It's the reason one day he went to church and he decided not to even listen to the sermon, but would pitch his seat by the offering bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he watched people come. Boom, boom, boom. And he was taking notice. It's amazing. If only you have spiritual eyes. God has revealed it time and again. Every time we're in service and we're taking offerings, it's like angels start recording. If ask God to open your eyes, you'll be shocked. They start recording. They start making note. He says of Jesus, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The order of you see, the order of service when it comes to all nations, in Dallas, in Halifax, in Ottawa, is supposed to be according to the order of all nations in Toronto. If, if you go to a Presbyterian church, the order of service is the same, even in a village, where they don't have the benefit of even a trained minister where they use a catechist. You see, the order, the ministry of Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek. Is the reason if you really know how to walk with God and work with him, you don't deviate from the order. That is how ministry is born. The ministry, every ministry is born and then God lays a foundation and everything is predicated on that. Not this is a cake. Oh, we don't want this. This is too old, old fashioned. Oh, the people don't like this. You notice that the ministry of Jesus is after the order of who? 
And Melchizedek is a tight collector. Because when he met Abraham, and Abraham gave him tight, he was looking at it carefully to make sure it was indeed tight of all. All right? Otherwise, he would have asked Abraham, Abraham, what about this goat? So Jesus ministers according to the order of Melchizedek. That's what the Bible says. Please say that with me. Jesus ministers after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus ministers after the order of Melchizedek. So his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. And that means that he ministers according to that order. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. I want to show you something. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Jesus ministers according to the order of Melchizedek. And he, he is now being made a priest. He is now setting up his church. Uh, he's been, these disciples have been with him for three years and counting. And the night in which he was going to die, he, he, he is the priest after the order of Melchizedek. When Melchizedek met Abraham and showed him the right approach of service to God, he gave him communion. Now Jesus gathers his disciples. He is ministering after the order of Melchizedek. Then he takes the bread and he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. He said, you must eat this. You must do this every time. And then he grabs the cup and he says, this is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you gather in remembrance of me. And he he is setting the church in order according to Melchizedek's. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 2, on the first day of the week when we come to church, let, e let each one of you lay something aside, soaring up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Every week when you meet, don't sing, naked come to thee for, for, uh, for dress. Uh, helpless look to thee for grace. There's nothing in my hand I bring. I just bring my body. No. He says, every week when you come, carry something. After the order of Melchizedek. In Ephesians 4.28, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who has need. There's something about God. You cannot say you're a Christian. You don't believe in giving. He says the reason a Christian must work so that he can have something to give. Yeah. Finally, because Jesus, Jesus' priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek, is the reason communion, which is partaking of the bread and wine, will continue till he comes. Because Jesus' ministry and priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek, tithes and offerings will continue till he comes. Amen. You want the blessing of Abraham, then walk ye in it. Amen. Forget about the law. Forget about the law of Moses. Because 
You notice Melchizedek dealt with Abraham. And we come from the loins of Abraham as well, spiritually speaking. And that is the ministry Jesus has. Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek. You must pay your tithe to your Christ, whose priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek, will you? Thank you for making this precious investment into your life. We believe the Word of God will transform you and usher you into new levels of God's goodness today. We invite you to connect with our ministry. To order inspirational books, messages, and other resources, call us toll-free at 1-888-263-4272. You can also visit us online at www.anfgc.org.